senior civic innovation specialist for the city of Pittsburgh, helped to manage PGH lab, started in January. Um, very excited to learn from the history of PGH lab and uh, you guys have been as alumni and current cohort members, you've been asked again and again to uh, submit feedback about the program. And I just want to let you know that we uh, read your feedback. We listen to what you have to say and are trying to make the changes that you are asking for. One of our main priorities right now that um, comes from your recommendations is uh, one of our priorities is funding. And so in addition to trying to figure out a funding model for the program itself, we're also committed to um, uh, connecting our, you guys, our alumni, our current participants with financial resources um, that will help hopefully benefit uh, the wonderful work that you still do today. So uh, I'm gonna pass it off to my colleague, Trevor, to introduce himself and then we'll hear from our speaker. I'm Trevor Stahl. Um, I've worked with quite a few of you on the PGH Lab cohorts. I am our Civic Innovation Specialist. Um, been through a couple uh, iterations of both uh, PGH Lab and the team now. So happy to say, I think we have um, some solid foundations and some good goals here coming up um, in this newest uh, uh, iteration. Um, as Ella mentioned, um, funding's gonna be a big um, priority of ours. So um, to keep it short and sweet, um, with that, uh, and in the spirit of said funding, I'm going to turn it over to um, Devin Abram, uh, De Abraham, who works over at the URA, and let him introduce himself um, and his title. Devin, take it away. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Ella. I appreciate your time. Um, for rental reasons, my name is Devin Abraham. I'm part of the uh, URA, uh, serving as their assistant director. Uh, I'm, I'm accompanied by Alyssa, who's part of our URA team, as well as URA Ventures. And um, I appreciate the platform we have today to really talk about this new initiative we have with the URA regarding your adventures. And your adventures is our early stage um, uh, investment kind of portfolio where we're looking to invest in the city of Pittsburgh, right? Um, there was a article that came out a few months ago saying how, you know, less than 1% of companies owned in the city of Pittsburgh were by individuals of color. Um, and there was a stat talking about how um, more than, um, you know, the average seed round in the city of Pittsburgh is around $50,000 versus the city of Pittsburgh, uh, city of Philadelphia, it's around 500, as well as Chicago and New York. So how can we really find ways to break into that Delta, uh, but figure out new ways for us to invest into companies, um, not only tech companies, but your, your local Main Street companies, your mom and pa's, et cetera. So you're, we created your Ventures, right? Your Ventures is a early stage uh, diversity focused fund looking to invest in the city of Pittsburgh, right? Our mission here is to change the face of entrepreneurship and venture capital by really making strategic uh, investments into the city uh, while, while also making investments, but also creating economic development, right? Um, so we created what we call as our trifold model thesis here. So our goal here is to, and these are our three tranches. We have Main Street businesses, which is your typical mom and pa shops, um, you know, let's say Joe's Pizzeria on Forbes, right? Um, what we're doing there is, for example, this, you know, Joe's Pizzeria can't go to a venture capital and say, hey, look, I need money, right? Because your typical VC looks for a, you know, five to 10x return. However, they also can't go to the bank because they're underutilized or don't have enough assets to put on against their business but they're still looking for funding. So we created what we call as RBF, uh, POS financing, so revenue-based financing, where we provide them an investment based upon their revenue, and then we take a percentage back per month um, moving forward, right? So for example, um, let's say they make $10,000 a month uh, for the first quarter, we would take a percentage of that, and let's say they make only $5,000 the next quarter, we would still take a percentage of that. So when they grow, we're growing with them, and on a decline, we're taking that risk as well, right? Versus your typical loan, it's a set amount per month, right? Let's say it's $1,000 per month. The issue with the set amount on these kind of businesses is, for example, during COVID, right? We were all hit during COVID. Um, and a lot of these companies were not able to increase revenue or to get back to their pre-COVID revenues. At the same time, they still owe that, they still have to pay back that loan or whatever it may be. And that set amount of loan per month 
uh, would hinder them in regards to their growth. So we're here to say, hey, we're doing a percent basage financing where we come from a three to five percent of the revenue per month. So those are your typical Main Street companies. And again, we're measuring SROI, which is social return on impact, as well as IMM, so impact multiples of money. We really want to track where our dollars are going. Right, the sense of you know, we're our the average is every dollar we invest, we're hoping to create two dollars from that, right? In regards to economic development. So then we have our startups. This is a PEF 2.0. The URA has done this before in regards to our Pittsburgh Entrepreneur Fund. We invested in some startups in the city. Now our goal is to redo this and to scale. Uh, so we've reinvested into this kind of allocation. These are your typical startups out of CMU, UPID, Duquesne, Point Park, etc. These are your startups that are in the tech space, health tech, fintech, um, crypto, uh, you know, Web 3.0. I mean, we really want to see these companies that really scale, um, especially in what we look at is for, okay, of your founders, how many are women? How many are of color, right? Um, how many individuals are in the city of Pittsburgh? What kind of growth they're using? Because we want to make sure the companies we invest in uh, have the same vision and alignment that the URA has as well. Uh, during these investments, we're expecting a two to three percent, two to three x return on a safer convertible note. Um, and then our third pillar is our co-investment. Right? There is, I would say, anywhere from there's almost half a dozen to a dozen venture capital firms in the city of Pittsburgh. Our goal here is to co-invest with them on particular investments. Right? Anywhere where the URA won't be the best, or or it's above our threshold. Now, this document kind of showcases um, what you want to see in regards to. Um, our, our trifold model, right? So our Main Street Ventures, we have 1.3 million. We're looking to give anywhere investment from 25 to 75, on average 50. And our goal here is to create 33 plus jobs, impact 21 businesses. You know, we're really looking at these local firms for individuals or companies that have been historically forgotten about, right? We really wanna look at how many individuals are MWB, women of color, et cetera. Um, then our PF 2.0, Again, your typical startup investment on a safe or convertible note, around the average of one to a hundred to hundred twenty-five thousand dollars on a safe uh, or convertible note. You know, we're looking to invest in anywhere from ten to twelve companies, twenty-five jobs created. Then we have our VC route, where we're going to do three tranches of a quarter million into other funds as a fund-to-fund LP. Um, where you know, overall, our, our goal here at our fund is job creation, social return on impact. We're really challenging. You know, the VC route, you're looking for 10x, but there are ways for us to get a return on capital, but at the same time, really create local economic development growth, their job creation, and they're really providing this ample liquid cash to companies that are looking to scale and grow. Um, so far, Alyssa and I have seen in about two or three weeks, we've seen over almost up to 100 companies. We're at 75, another 10 trickling in, but we're seeing companies come in phase one. Now we're on phase two of going through these companies in the DD phase. Um, how an investment works is you know, it will be a rolling basis, right? We have an investment committee, a very diverse investment committee, to, uh, compromise of individuals within the city of Pittsburgh from a social impact and venture background. Uh, we meet once a month to go over deal flow. Uh, and then we provide this companies that we believe should be invested in into our URA. And then our executive team meets once a month to decide, okay, these are the companies we want to move forward with. And then we begin our LOI and, and investment thesis. So our, our, our fund is rolling 30 days. Our goal is, you know, to have to have to finish this investment by end of year and to come back next year and figure out, okay, these are our impacts we made on, on our last three quarters. How do we scale again and redo this, right? On a bigger scale. So yeah, that's uh, URA Ventures. Um, ex- super excited for this. A lot of positive feedback we're getting from the community. Uh, a lot of individuals that we're working with who are really just looking to grow and we want to be able to use our backgrounds to be able to provide that uh, bridge or provide that capital to really grow and to scale and to grow within our city of Pittsburgh. Um, that being said, I'll, I'll leave the floor for anyone who has any questions, comments, or concerns. Uh, so the the last investment thesis, uh, are you leading rounds in tandem with other investors? Um, we're coming as LPs, right? Okay. We're coming as LPs to other funds that are looking to, we're saying, hey, you know, any fund in Pittsburgh is not specifically just for Pittsburgh, obviously for return reasons. Uh, they're more Midwest or national or global. We're coming in saying, hey, here's X amount, so quarter million. Uh, we want to come in as an LP of the URA, uh, and we want to co-invest with you on companies that are based in Pittsburgh. So it'll be an exchange of deal flow, and we come in and kind of go from there. In regards to leading, um, since the f- fund is small, uh, any company that's going on a typical safe or convertible note, 
It depends on the size, but I don't see the URA leading, right? Because 100 grand to $125,000 may or may not be a lot, depending on what kind of raise you're doing. We're, so far, we've seen companies raising pre seed, Series A, anywhere from half a million to uh, two to five million, right? The URA, because of our constraints on regards to our total capital of three million, we really don't, we really can't lead. Um, but if it's a small round of four hundred, and we're leading with the hundred grand or one hundred twenty-five, then we are the lead in regards to retrospect. So I hear you mentioned that you're looking for um, diversity in funding organizations that are either women-owned or minority-owned. Um, I- not just those are factors that we're looking at when we look at a company in a holistic point of view. There might be companies that we particularly look at that may not have that, but we might encourage that in regards to our mission and our mission statement, right? Of regards to we want to focus, we want to have a focus on that, but we're not trying to close off that parameter. Right. I already have a business partner and she is minority owned, but she does not own the company. So they wouldn't have to own the company fully, right? They would have to be part of the founding team or we want to look at holistically. I'll give you an example. There was a a really good startup that reached out to us the other day uh, and they were very honest about, hey, look, our our first four founders are not of MWBE and we fully, and they understand the what they need to do to get there, right? Mm-hmm. And they want to work with us to get there. Mm-hmm. They're still applying and we're still looking at their thesis and their P&Ls and their DD. Um, and more than likely, anyone from the MWB community won't be an owner in that community, an owner in that uh, startup Right. But we're leading them towards the direction of hiring more MWB, right? But we appreciate that they've identified that, right? And that's kind of our goal here, to get companies that have not hired anyone with an MWB world to identify, hey, we need help to get there. Or, hey, we do, or, you know, there was a question yesterday about um, minimal, there's minimal companies and or minimal funds in the city of Pittsburgh that are leading um, companies that are led by women. And that's a problem, right? Um, there's minimal leagues here. And, and that was a concern or a question that we had. And so yeah, to answer your question, um, it's a holistic point of view, right? We're not looking at specifically, hey, that MWB has to own the company or have equity, they, but we want them to be at the table, right? Those are two different kind of approaches there. Oh, well, we're at the table and being a service disabled veteran also, I yeah, think we're a exactly. minority that gets overlooked holistically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Your goal is a, uh, I believe it was two to three X or three to five X on a five year time scale. Is there a clawback after five years or is that a hopeful range? Um, so that's in regards to the uh, pillars of the fund, but not the whole fund, right? Um, look, 90% of companies in the first year go belly up, right? And we're fully aware of that, right? Especially on Main Street companies, we understand the risk that we're taking. We're taking a higher risk, right? Um, especially at retail, we all know that retail spaces are closing up and drop shipping is there and online ordering and all that. Um, so we understand there's a decline in retail, especially Main Street, but they're still like our backbone of the economy, more or less, right? So we understand if we get a if we, if we get a one x return there, we'll be happy. But we're our risk parameters have shown that if we don't, we could still make a return here. Our startups, we're looking for around a one point five to two x return. Uh, two to three is like the national average, and then our VC route. I mean, all VCs are looking for ten x, right? So if we somehow get in between the three and five, we'll be fine. Overall average of the fund, if we get a 1.3 to 1.5 X return with the 80 plus jobs we created, we've, we've hit our goals. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I had one question for her, perhaps some of our viewers um, that weren't able to join us today. <clears throat> um, if they wanted to learn um, any additional information um, on this program or connect with you, where um, could they perhaps go to, to find that information? Yeah, so uh, we, we launched three weeks ago, so we're still working on our website. Um, you could go to ura.org and type in ura-ventures, and it should be there. So a quick landing page. We're working internally on creating a new landing page for that. Um, reach out to myself or Alyssa, who's here as well. Our emails will be uh, on the chat or on our forward email. Also, you can email admin at ura-ventures.org. Um, we'll be able to uh, have a... Uh, we, we've been using that as communication. Um, we're doing our best to, we're working with this, right? I mean, we're doing our best to maybe once a month have in-person just a uh, town hall meeting or or just open room or anyone has any questions. We, we did it last week or a couple of weeks ago and it was great. We had four or five companies come in and really uh, pitch their company, literally. Um, and so, yeah, if anyone wants to reach out to us, I mean, the URL website's live. Uh, there's some kind of landing page there. 
hoping to have our full uh, you, you know URI Ventures landing page and website hopefully out by three uh, quarter three, depending on that. Um, but URI Adventures is our tagline. So we're on Instagram and, and Twitter and um, all, all other social media outlets. So that's another way to reach out, reach out to us as well. Yeah. Or just stop Perfect. by the URA, right? <laughs> Knock on our door. Yeah. In person is the thing now after so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Deb, any other questions? Uh, Daniela, I do have a question. Um, my question is more about when you guys plan on de starting to deploy that cash, um, especially for the venture area. Yeah. Um, thanks, Daniela. And how's it going? Uh, yeah, we're, our goal right now is we met with our investment committee uh, last week. Really good, uh, really good call we had. And then we are aiming to write LOIs second week of uh, June. Um, and then from that will speed up our any DD process takes in the MA world more than 90 to 180 days, right? So we're trying to consolidate that. That's why phase two will be asking heavy for PLs and balance sheets, uh, with the idea of having our LOIs non binding out by second week of June and to have capital in, we're hoping last week of June, first week of July, which is a quick 45 to 60 day turnaround, but yeah. Sounds good. Thanks. And yeah, great no to see you. <laughs> uh, David, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you. It's Stefano. Um, we we met previously uh, about I think, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, I did have a small question that is, uh, do you guys see yourself being involved in follow-up rounds? Like after, you know, like an initial investment, like what are your guys' thoughts about that? hundred percent. It's all about double downing, right? Um, PEF 1.0, just a quick update. That was our, that was a Pittsburgh, I was a, it was a Pittsburgh Entrepreneur Fund backed by the URA. Uh, it was open pre-COVID for a couple of years. Like there are companies on that portfolio who are now raising a Series A, which we are for sure going to be part of, right? So we, just because we've only invested a little bit right now, doesn't mean we won't come back for a follow-up, right? Um, again, since our funding is limited on 3 million, um, our goal is to potentially raise another round later on. But right now we want to just fully uh, deploy our current assets and then um proceed from there so yeah to answer your question if we made a bet on you once i mean why not double down yeah i appreciate it thank you thank you Evan, and thank you everyone um so this was uh hopefully the first of a series of uh video information sessions that we'll be hosting about different financial resources that we would like to make sure that you all are aware of and connected to. Um, so look for future resource roundups uh, in the future. And that's, a, that's it. So if anyone else has any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and speak up. Otherwise, thank you all for coming and we'll talk to you soon.